Okay, so let's move into a little bit of all Australian talk. So we haven't really talked about the all Australian this year. We've both done. Uh, we both had a look at it today. In fact, I was doing it at work. Sorry, <laughs> my <laughs> boss is listening. But um, we both went through the predictor. You think they should make it twenty three now that we've got a sub? No, but if they make it a twenty, like, well, they're saying that there's going to be a five benches and no sub. Mm. I think then that's when they have to make it twenty three. But now I think it's 22. We'll go through our predictions for our All-Australian teams for 2024. Now, of course, these are we're actually leaking the actual team. Well, I am anyway. I don't know what you've done. But I'm, I'm leaking the team. Um, so what I've gone at the full back line, I've gone Luke Ryan, Alex Pierce, Nick Blakey. At half back, I've gone Max Holmes, Harris Andrews, Lockie Whitfield. Across the centre, on the two wings, I've gone Errol Goulden, Nick Martin. And in the centre, I've gone Marcus Bontempelli. At half forward, I've gone Dylan Moore, Charlie Kerno, and Brent Daniels. In the full forward line, I've gone Tyson Stengel, Jesse Hogan, Joe Danaher. That's the followers. I've gone the Ruckman as Rowan Marshall, Isaac Heaney as the Ruck Rover, and Nick Dacos. And on the interchange, I have gone Patrick Cripps, Zach Merritt, Dane Zorko, and Zach Butters. So that is my 22. We'll go through yours. What are you going with? So at full back, I've got Andy McGrath, Harris Andrews, and Nick Blakey. Half Back, I've went Jordan Clark, Jerry McGovern, and Dane Zorko. In the centre, I've went Errol Goulden, uh, Nick Dacos, and on the other wing is Paddy Cripps. Um, on the half forward line, I've went Sam Flanders, uh, Jesse Hogan, and Isaac Heaney. And at full forward, Dylan Moore, Charlie Kerno, and Josh Tracy. And the followers and the Ruckman have went Tristan Jerry, Zach Merritt, and Marcus Bontempelli. And on the bench, I've went with uh, Lockie Neal, Hayden Young, Adam Trelaw, and Sam Walsh. Well, we have gone with a lot of differences. I didn't really see this coming. Okay, so you got Lockie Whitfield in your team? No. Okay. That's a pretty big one. I think Lockie Whitfield's probably been the, one of the better halfbacks this year. Um, the reason why I've kind of gone with this sort of backline is... Um, I'm looking at it like this is would actually be a team, mm. but also well that's um, stupid because they never pick it as a team. <laughs> well, they, I think they did pretty well last year. I'm going to be honest. Well, they picked two wingmen, which was a bit surprising. Yeah, that's where I've kind of gone with the wing as well. I think Max Holmes has had a very underrated year for the Cats. I mm. think he's played very well off of halfback. He's been a pretty good ball user. Um, I'm unsure if they will pick him as the halfback player, but for me personally, I think he was definitely. I think he was second best. I think there was a couple of um, notable misses though. I think Dan Houston's pretty close to it. He didn't get it. Dane Zorko, I do have. He's on the bench. The reason why I haven't put Dane Zorko on the actual team is because I think if this was to be an actual 22, I think that Dane Zorko would play anywhere. Yeah. So he could be in the guts. He could play as a small forward if he had to. Mm. So that's why I've kind of gone with that. As the full back line, well, I think that Luke Ryan's a very good small def- a, a good defender on the smalls, but also can play tall as well. Mm. Similar to Nick Blakey as well. Mm. So, But I think that he's a lot more of a runner. So I'm not really picking Nick Blakey on the side that he can match up on someone, but he can if he has to. Yeah. That's kind of where I've gone for on that front. On the wings, I've gone Goulden and Martin. D'Ambrosio is very close to getting this spot on the wing. If, if they go with like a, the two wingmen that they should be doing, well, like they did last year. Mm. But I think the reason why I picked Nick Martin is because he kicks goals. He's a good two-way runner for Essendon. Usually a pretty good user with the footy. That's kind of what I've got with him. Errol Golden, pretty obvious. I think everyone's going to have him as a wing spot. And uh, Mark Sponson fairly just got him in the guts, basically, because I think he deserves a 22 spot. Yeah. Um, in the forward line, I've got Dylan Moore, Brent Daniels, and Charlie Kernow as half forwards, and then Tyson Stengel, Hogan, and Joe Danaher. Dylan Moore and Brent Daniels, I think, have had very good years. Absolutely insane. Especially Brent Daniels. His end of the year has been brilliant. Mm. So I think that's definitely going to get extra marks for him. Dylan Moore... It's insane that he was on the rookie list for Hawthorne a couple of years well, ago. Well, he was nearly delisted at the end of 2020. Yeah. Now he's the vice captain. He's had a massive year for the mm-hmm. Hawks. He's led from the front. Even though even James Sisley was the captain, probably had a little bit of a down a year, I would say, mm-hmm. compared to his year before when he did get the All-Australian spot. But Dylan Moore's really lifted, and I think he's been that sort of general up forward when you know they've got the sparks of Ginevan, Watson... Uh, Connor McDonald, he's definitely that one who's just going to give you, you know what he's going to give you every week. Mm. So that's where I've gone for. And Charlie Kerno obviously picks it centre half forward, I think. Really. You I pick w- your two best. Um, well, he's top. still second in the Carmen. He is still second. Yeah, exactly. And Tyson Stengel may be a bit of a surprise to some people. He has kicked 40 goals this year. He's been very good for the Cats. But I think that Tyson Stengel has been the best just small forward. I don't know if that's if that makes any sort of sense. But basically, like, he's been the best forward you'd kick to as a small. Mm. He's a good crummer. I think that's why he's there. Jesse Hogan, he's going to win the Coleman. He's had a great year. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, Joe Danaher, 
I toss this one up between him and Jamara. Jamara Eagle Hagen. He's had a very good end of the year. But I just think that Joe Danaher, even though he didn't have a very good week last week against the Pies, I, I do think he's had a very good year. Mm. That's why I went with him. In the ruck, I went Rowan Marshall. Uh, Tristan Cherry was my second choice. He definitely would have been there. But I just thought Rowan Marshall, he's been uh, insanely good this year. And Isaac Heaney and Dacos picked themselves. Now, the bench may be a bit of a tough one for some people. So, a lot of midfielders have missed. So, I've gone Cripps, uh, Merritt, and Butters, along with Dane Zorko, which I mentioned previously. Now, I've left out Hayden Young. I left out Lockie Neal. I left out Trelaw, Walsh, Sheasel, McCluggage, Sarong, Tom Green, and Chad Warner. So, there's a lot of midfielders to choose from. I picked Patrick Cripps because I think that this team does have to have a captain. I think that he would be the captain. I think he has done had a very good year. He kind of started it slow, but since oh, mid-year, I think that when, even when they have had been poor, he has been Carlton's best by a mile. Mm. So I think I think Patrick Cripps deserves his spot. Zach Merritt, especially at the start of the year, he was immensely good for the uh, Bombers. He was leading from the front. He was a great captain, probably the best captain of the year midway through the season. Even now, when Essendon are playing quite poorly, I still think he's been their best. And Zach Butters, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if I would have picked him, but in the last five weeks, I think he's definitely um, rose his game to what the power of needed. Mm. So that's why he's been picked. Um, to be honest, if I had to change one or two, I would probably put Hayden Young in the team. I think that he's been really good this year, probably for Zach Butters. And Lockie Neal probably would come in for Zach Merritt. That, I think that Zach Merritt one would be Lockie Neal or Adam Trelaw. That would probably mm. be the swap. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I understand that people would probably think differently. That's completely fine. That's kind of what the reasons why I picked those ones. What are you? What? Maybe explain a couple to me because you said Andrew McGrath. That's a big one because I think at the start of the year he definitely would be. But I feel like I looked at him a bit, but I was like, I think the second half of the year has been a bit poor. Yeah, I think I still think he's a very good leader in that team. When he was doing well. So were Essendon. And I think he was very underrated. For what Essendon were doing all season, he was very underrated, I thought. I think he is a very good defender. And he goes very uh, much under the radar. Well, look, Jeremy McGovern, I've gone Alex Pierce as like my key defender. Jeremy McGovern had a pretty poor year, the West Coast Eagles. He's been back, though. so I think it showed. if he was Him and Barats being there, if it was like last year, the last couple of years, when, he had, when they both haven't been there, they would have lost every, nearly every game. Yeah. They would have lost nearly every game again so it shows how good he really is and how much they need him in that team yeah so you don't think that West Coast could use him as trade bait in the, next, what, the, no. in the trade period they need to keep him they need to keep him so we'll go to the half forward line for me because I had Flanders and Heaney because yeah. well, well for, for one thing Flanders has played pretty much everywhere so you could probably put him on the bench but I thought um, at the start of the year when he was playing a bit more half back he can pretty much play anywhere so I kind of just put him in the team because I didn't really think that there was a many other forwards, really big forwards that generated the position, really. I didn't think Stengel d- deserved. Isaac Heaney, well, even though he's played the guts for his 90% of the year, I think playing in forward the last couple of years, you might just be able to slot him right in the f- half forward line. Yeah. Um, Josh Tracy's a big big call. But I think the last couple of weeks, I think, well, with him being out, I think it's shown that they do need him in that team. Yeah. And... He is a good contested mark. It doesn't matter where he's on the field. He can take a contested mark. And at the very least, he brings it to ground. Yeah. Yeah. So, the what? I mean, you've called Tristan Cherry as your ruckman. I picked Rowan Marshall. So, Tristan Cherry. I think you just have to give it to him. I think you've got to put him in that team. He, yeah. took, he can just dominate anywhere. Yeah. And it doesn't... I think the fact is that she's playing better. I think um, you're looking at that midfield of the... North Melbourne. If he's not in that team, Tristan Jerry, I don't think he, they have the same influence they do as the, the, that North Melbourne midfield does. Yeah. So I think he has helped a lot of the younger midfielders develop this year, like the Sheasel, Wardlaw, Powell, um, Davis Uniac as well. So I think mm. I think that's a big reason as well why a lot of those North Melbourne players are excited about the future. Like Davis Uniac didn't want to leave anymore and that. So I think that's a good. I I, I, I Cherry was my second choice. I just don't think they're going to pick two Ruckman. No, 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 I think the Rowan Marshall for me yeah. personally, I think he was um, the choice for me. But yeah. the bench is pretty much exactly the opposite of what I had. Yeah. So I had Cripps, Merritt, Butters, and Zorko. Uh, you have Zorko, but you've gone with four midfielders from the year: yeah. Neil Young, Chaw, and Walsh. Yeah. I think Walsh is that one that could not be in the team, probably because he didn't miss it. I think Cripps's influence was more influential in that team. So, obviously, he's in the 22, uh, in the midfield of the Crips. Looking at it, Walsh 
he's probably the one of my in my team that's not going to make it if it's a, if there is anyone. Trelaw, I think he's had a very fuck uh, very good year, and if he's not in that team, I don't know what he has to do to make it. Really, yeah, he's never made an All Australian team yeah. in his career, even though he's been very good for so long. Yeah, uh, so, Hayden Young being the most damaging player in the last seven or in the last, since for instance, since the bye. Yeah, Hayden Young was very close for me. Mm. Um, I would have had, like I said, I would have had him in probably for Zach Butters because mm. I feel like that's like my spark midfielder. Mm. Butters is like the spark midfielder who comes on. I get the Hayden Youngs like that spark. He's a very good ball user, and I think he's definitely he was very close. To, if I had to pick a sub, he would be my sub. Yeah. I think if there's a more damaging player at the moment, he's in the top five of the most damaging players in the game. Yeah, and Lockie Neal, I think it was more of the fact is that. He's very close to a brown line, and there's there's only you think he can go through. I think he'll go close, and I think that there's only ever been one person that's missed the All Australian that's won the brown line, and that was Mark, uh, Matt Prittis. Yeah, so I don't and think, obviously Lockie Neal last year. Yeah, Lockie <laughs> Neal last year. So imagine if he did it twice. That'd be funny. <laughs> that would be yeah, funny. Yeah. So that's my twenty two. So yeah, I mean, I think look, if I'm going to be honest, if I had to pick one player that I'm very surprised that you picked, even though I love the player is Josh Tracy. I think that there's no way in hell he makes the team. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to any Fremantle fans out there. I think he's had a brilliant year, and I would love him in my team. I can't see him making the team. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But it would be... I would love to see him get a jacket. Mm. That would be awesome. 